Hello, my fellow autistics and my holistic allies. Okay, so today's video, this is day two of the 30 Days of Autism series that I have on here, or that I'm, I'm filming um, here. So, um, today's video is going to be common autism terms explained. So, for those of you who are autistic, you don't have to watch this because obviously you know what the terms mean, but if you want to, you can. Um, and those of you who, you know, maybe there are holistics watching my channel, um, and kind of learning from me, which I hope is happening, I don't know, um, this might be helpful. So, I'm going to go into the most common terms used by the autistic community and by professionals working with the autistic community, and yeah. Okay, so the first term, autism, um, uh, so autism, also known as autism spectrum disorder, ASD, um, is a neurodevelopmental condition characterized by trouble with social interaction, impaired or lack of communication skills, and repetitive behaviors and restricted interests. That's the like medical term, but for lots of autistics, it just means we have a different neurology than most people, and um, it just means that we we have special interests and we take things literally sometimes and um, we don't really get jokes. So there's like a whole list of things. So autism is just the um, the, the disorder or the neurological difference. Um, neurotypical. Neurotypical is someone who is not autistic and doesn't have any sort of neurodivergence. So depression, anxiety, ADHD schizophrenia, um, all these different things. So someone who doesn't have any mental disorder or difference whatsoever is neurotypical. Allistic just means non-autistic. So you can be neurodivergent and allistic. So for example, one of my friends uh, is neurodivergent. Um, they've got um, depression and things like that, but they're allistic because they are not autistic. So that means, so holistic is the opposite of autistic. Um, there are lots of people that will say neurotypical when they mean holistic, but that, that's kind of a misnomer. Okay, next term, neurotype. Neurotype is um, how the brain is wired. So someone who is holistic has a different neurotype from someone who is autistic or someone who is neurodivergent or someone who is neurotypical. Um, although Allistic and neurotypical can go hand in hand. You can be neurotypical and be allistic. Um, you cannot be neurotypical and be autistic because that's neurodivergence. So um, someone who has a different neurotype can have um, a neurotype that is non-autistic or... Yeah, that's basically all that whole category right there. Special interest. Special interest is... Okay, so think of fangirling but a hundred times more. It's, it's way, way intense. Um, special interests are things that autistics get into. Um, they can be fandoms, they can be, um, for example, my permanent special interests are tech and words, but my, um, per my temporary special interests are like fandoms and like books and TV and movies, sh like in movies and TV shows and things like that. Um, and so, Special interests are something that an autistic can focus on for weeks, months, maybe even years. Um, it can be a favorite subject. Lots of um, lots of um, autistic lots of autistics have special interests that are, for example, um, the climate change activist Greta Thunberg. Um, her special interest is climate and environmental, like um, the health of the environment. And so she turned her special interest into what she does. Same with me. Autism is a special interest, and I make autism videos because of it. Okay, um, let's see. Neurodivergent, anyone who's got... Um, and these can all be used as nouns, by the way. Neurotypical, neurodivergent, autistic. They're adjectives, but they can also be nouns. So the autistics, the neurodivergents, the neurotypicals. So neurodivergent means any... Um, neurodivergent just means... You can be autistic or you can have other um, neurological differences, so depression, anxiety, OCD, schizophrenia, all those different um, neurological differences and disorders and things like that. 
they all fit under that umbrella of neurodivergence. Um, so you can be autistic and you would be considered neurodivergent if you didn't have anything else. Um, you would still be considered neurodivergent. Um, let's see. Um, rep okay, stimming. Um, stimming is short for self-stimulatory behavior. So that means any, um, any repetitive movement or behavior or sound that someone on the spectrum, it's others, so neurotypicals and people with ADHD can do it as well, but it's, it's common, it's, it's a little more common with autistics. So stimming can be flapping, so like this, um, something like that. Or um, one of my favorite stims is when I go like this. Um, or words for me are a stim. There's verbal stims, visual stims. So uh, um, getting one of those sensory, um, those visual toys with like the water and the bubbles and the one of those. So that's another sensory stim. Um, um, so yeah, anything, pretty much anything can be a stim, just depending on the person. Dancing can be a stim, singing can be a stim, um, clicking a pen can be a stim. Um, okay, next term. Um, sensory overload. So I did a video on this recently. Sensory overload is um, the um, overstimulation of your sensory processing centers. So hearing, sight, smell, touch, and taste. So some things can be too rough for some autistics, or too tight, or too loose. Well, not too loose, but they can be too tight, they can be too um, smelly, or they can be too bright, or too loud. Um, for me, I struggle with auditory and oral sensitivities, um, and so that's a thing. Um, uh, sensory seeking. So someone who needs sensory input, so they need to be touched constantly, or they need to be... Um, they need to listen to loud music a lot. And this can vary for some people. Um, for me, most of the time, I'm what's called sensory avoidant. I'm about to explain that in a second. Um, in the sound department, I can be kind of... So sensory avoidant basically means you don't really want sensory input. So for me, a lot of times, sounds can be very loud. But there are also times where I really want to blast my music and um, really feel that sensory input. And so sensory seeking can be anyone who, um, for example, if someone has an autistic partner, uh, the autistic might want to snuggle a lot more, or they might want um, like loud music or different, um, they might like spicy foods because of their sensory seeking needs, things like that. So sensory avoidant, I kind of explained, but I'll go a little deeper. Someone who doesn't want sensory input, someone who actively avoids it whenever possible. So that can be, I can translate into, um, touch aversion, and constant covering of the ears, or no wearing noise-canceling headphones, um, eating bland foods, all of that. And again, that can vary. There are some people that experience a fluctuation from day to day. There are some people that it's completely static and it never changes. For me, it's kind of a fluctuation, but most of the time it doesn't change. Um, most of the time I'm kind of sensory avoidant with taste too. I try to avoid try to eat bland foods. Um, okay, uh, next thing. Touch averse or touch aversion means um, not wanting to be touched at all. Um, either at all or by people you don't know. For me, it's people I don't know. For most, well not for most autistics, but for a lot of autistics, it's not wanting to be touched at all. But for me, it's just people that I don't know or people that I don't trust or um, even people that I know, sometimes if they don't let me know that they're going to touch me, I'll like kind of back away and be like, nope. Most of the time though, with touch, I am very sensory seeking. So yeah, touch aversion, basically not wanting to be touched. Not, not wanting to be touched. Not wanting to be touched. God, my tongue isn't working today. Okay. Um, let me see. Let me see. Um, neurodiversity. Neurodiversity is the belief that everyone is the same despite neurotypes and everyone should be um, accepted whether or not they're neurodivergent, neurotypical, holistic. Um, they should be accepted and, and, and loved for who they are. And, um, basically all the, this, this whole, the whole neurodiversity thing is, um, 
in a few words, neurodiversity is the idea or the movement or the belief, whatever you want to call it, that um, all neurotypes, so allistics, neurodivergence, neurotypicals, autistics, are all part of this human genome and they're all part of, of humanity. They're all, they're all just another variation of humanity. Um, let's see. Um, autism acceptance. That means um, the. Um, I made a video about this yesterday. So awareness and acceptance are different things, and acceptance basically just means being able to embrace and understand autistics and being able to normalize it. Neuronormative. This is the the term that I said I was going to cover yesterday. Neuronormative is the idea that. Um, neurotypicality, typicality, neurotypicality, sorry, <laughs> stimming, um, neurotypicality is the norm, and it is the only, really, the norm, it's kind of like heteronormativity, or, blah, heteronormativity, wow, I really cannot talk today, go figure, um, would you believe that these aren't scripted? <laughs> um, um, it is, um, kind of similar to heteronormativity in the sense that, um, Neurotypicals are thought to be like the norm, and um, autistics are not really normalized, and so neurotypicals are like the, the supreme normal, and the society is very geared toward neurotypicals, so it's neuronormative. Um, if that doesn't make any sense, I'm so sorry. You can you can comment down below and have me explain it better if you want. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Um, I don't think there's anything else. If I think of more terms, I will make a part two of this. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, Alistic or otherwise, I don't care who watches my channel. I just want to help people. So please let people know. All right. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.